It's been like a week, and I can't believe people are still fighting about this uh, Yasuke Ubisoft Black Samurai thing. Especially since the whole debate on Yasuke was settled like way before anyone who's currently mad about it was even a twinkle in their father's eye. And if you don't know, because why would you know? We know next to nothing about Yasuke because there's only a handful of written, you know, side notes about him in history. Oh, he came from Mozambique. No, he didn't. We don't know that. For some reason, there's a black man in Japan during a very bizarre time, and we know nothing about him, so someone's like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if he was a samurai? Yeah, it would be cool. So they wrote a story for fictional entertainment reasons only, which, again, video games are not actually history. They are entertainment. They are entertainment, right? So it makes sense that they would choose this fantastical fictional story of, you know, Yasuke being a black samurai. For a video game, it makes sense. Now, I do understand the plight and anger of the Japanese people, and they are angry because, you know, Assassin's Creed has set a precedent of how they do their games where, you know, they pick a certain time period and culture and they use people from that culture, except for this one time, the only time, <laughs> they're not gonna do that for Japan. And so I understand why they're mad, especially because we all know the reason Ubisoft went with the story. Um, was not just because it would be interesting, but because obviously for diversity and inclusion, which is basically Ubisoft saying Japanese people aren't diverse enough. <laughs> Damn, Ubisoft. Welcome to the club, Japan. You ain't diverse no more. <laughs> no, but the real controversy about this game, what's really messed up, has nothing to do with the storyline. That's, what, that's whatever. It's this right here the pricing the ubisoft pricing that they're trying to normalize like they tried to do with the star wars thing and it didn't work this ridiculous tiers in pricing because one a 70 dollars game is already a lot but imagine paying 70 dollars for only part of a game because that's exactly what you're doing first of all in order to get more pieces of this game you first have to pre-order a game before knowing anything before knowing if this game is good or hot garbage you have to just believe in ubisoft because they have such a great track record for games so you have to pre-order because the pre-order gets you this right here this extra quest that you get that you only get if you pre-order so if you pay the 70 dollars you get most of the game and if you pre-order you get a little bit more of the game but that's still not the whole game, because if we come over here for the $110 price and you go brrr, down here to the season pass you get with, if you order the gold edition, you also get more bonus quests on day one and additional unlockable content in the two upcoming expansions. So basically, if you want the entire game, the finished product, a completed product that they promised, you have to pay $110 and ten dollars at minimum minimum a hundred and ten dollars and you have to pre-order so you have to pay for it without even knowing if the product's gonna be good or not and this is just absolutely ridiculous and a few people I've seen talk about this you know a lot of them mention you know greed because they're just quick to go there because it does seem greedy but in reality what's happening is just <sighs> Ubisoft is trying to make the market cater to their bad business model and it is a bad business model which is never going to work the market is beholden to no one it just does whatever it wants to do successful businesses will cater their business model to the market that's how this works it's just a bad business model in order to make money off this game they probably have to sell it at at least $110. But they can't just come out and say it's $110 because nobody would buy it. So they have to do this bizarre cutting up and trickery and try to, you know, get people to buy more and more in pieces because they're more likely to buy in pieces than just, you know, the whole up front. And it's just, an, it's just not going to work. It's just not a sustainable business model anymore. They're just not sustainable in this era. They were, you know, 10 15 years ago but the market is different now especially when you can have games like pow world or 
Another Crab's Treasure or Enshrouded. The last three games I bought, by the way, were all $30. Each of these games, these great, fantastic games, are $30. And I didn't even pay $30 for them. I got them all on sale. I paid around like varying $24 to $25 for each of these. And my main concern about, about the recent game I just bought, Enshrouded, is that it's so big and has so much stuff in it. I'm afraid I'm going to have to spend too much time in order to beat it. That's my concern. <laughs> so in a world where you can have these fantastic games coming for the price of $30, why would anyone take a chance on spending $110 and you have, and you're forcing them, you're forcing them to take a chance on this by forcing them to pre-order in order to get the full game. Why would they do it? Sure. You're probably going to have a few stands who just, you know, they're just fanboys and they'll just do whatever you want. But even that's still, that's not going to work for the long run. It's not going to work when you have games that can be made for a tiny, tiny fraction of what you paid for to make this game. And then they blow you out of the water sales wise. This business model is just completely outdated and unsustainable. And Ubisoft is going to learn that real quick in the next coming years.